This is Bloomberg Markets. I'm John Ehrlichman. In this higher interest rate environment, there have been a lot of questions about Canada's real estate sector. Yes, certainly for residential properties, but also on the commercial side. And for investors in real estate investment trusts, they likely know that the real estate sector has lagged the broader Canadian market this year. Gaurav Mather is Director of REIT Research at Laurentian Bank Securities, and he joins us here in studio. Thanks for being with us. And, you know, I think this is a wide world of companies that have exposure to real estate yeah. but, uh, or, or interest rate uh, moves. But how significant of a change has this interest rate environment created for, for the real estate sector? Well, firstly, thank you for having me on the show. Um, you know, to your question, it has been quite significant. Uh, bear in mind that before the 500 basis point increase by the Bank of Canada, we were looking at a very long period of sub 1% rates. And that, you know, made a lot of the public and the private market real estate players act differently. But now that the regime has changed, I'd say the rules are changing as well as we speak. And, you know, one thing that uh, you wonder about uh, uh, in this kind of environment, when there's a there's a big need for uh, more homes, more housing in this country, is whether or not actually you see building development, uh, condo development, apartment development uh, in a higher interest rate environment. Are, are you seeing signs of of a cool down there, just because of the reality of higher rates? Yes, that has been one. Um, significantly speaking, the cost of construction has gone up, and while there is demand and demand continues to be very strong. We have to realize that historically, this, this has been a market where supply has been on the short side. Now, add in higher rates, uh, construction financing is hard to come by, uh, or is that at least at much higher rate as our interest rates, it does play into the factor that, you know, developers are not really incentivized to develop going forward, at least until there's some stability. So, as I mentioned, there's so many components to the real estate market. One is what's happening with for example, new condos, residential construction. Another is what's happening in the office market. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have been concerned. It's not just necessarily a Canada story, but a lot of people are concerned about the health of the office market, yes. generally speaking, especially in, in, in cities and downtown cores. Mm -hmm. How concerned are you about it? Uh, I'd say there's some concern, uh, but I'd say it's more, you know, depending on what kind of office are we talking about. Is it class A office? Is it off downtown core office? Is it class B, class C? I'd say the nuances that, you know, all of these subclasses are working in a very different manner, where there's more stress in certain suburban market pockets compared to what's happening in the downtown core. And does that have to do with... Um the fragility of a business, like let's say if uh, a bank's a big you know, client or has a big office tower, they might be in a better situation than another economy that's, a uh, business is hurt by a, a cool down in the economy um, or, or, or other considerations there. Well, uh, from a tenant perspective, we've seen the most headlines come out from, you know, the tech side, with tech tenants sort of giving up space and a lot of the work from home conversation happening. Right. The more financial institutions and banks have been mandating workers to come back to the office for productivity reasons, which I do agree with. I'd say this is just a market which will remain in a bit of flux for the moment. It's not dead by any means, and I think uh, I do take... You know, a bit of issue when people tell me that office market's dead. I, I don't believe that to be true. But yes, it, this will work itself out uh, over the coming year. And then, then there's the investing piece, and maybe we can zero in on the public investing part of sure. it because you cover a lot of these different real estate investment trusts. And a reminder to our audience that there's a lot of different businesses that make up Canada's real estate investment trust sector. Mm -hmm. There's companies, yes, that focus on residential, some that focus on the downtown office market there are some that are focused on things like strip malls or mm -hmm. you know the real estate associated with a grocery store chain where are you finding that the uh, the businesses are in better shape than than others if you will for for investors to consider right now i'd say uh you know rule of thumb it does seem to be that industrial and multifamily and grocery anchor centers are tending to fare a lot better compared to, say, some of the suburban office assets, uh, you know, some retail as well. Now, again, uh, you have to drill down more onto the fundamentals here rather than painting everything with the same paintbrush. There are certain names where, you know, the retail assets are working, but, you know, the stock price at the moment may not be.
and that sometimes is a, a reflection of the business, sometimes it's just a reflection of the mood of the markets? It is more a reflection of the mood of the markets at this stage. Um, if the businesses are producing cash flow growth, I'd say that's the metric that we're looking at uh, avidly across the entire coverage. Uh, we do tend to you know, give them a lot more points uh, there, but uh, it, it does take a fair nuanced view. So, Gaurav, you, you cover a, a whole host of uh, publicly traded real estate names. Are, are there any examples of, of companies out there that get a pretty big check mark from you, uh, a thumbs up, if you will, as, as, as investments you think are, 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 are worth considering right now? Absolutely. And, you know, back to our earlier conversation, you know, multifamily is something that we at Laurentian Bank Securities are very bullish on going forward. We do like a lot of the names uh, in our coverage. Uh, you know, there are some good ones there with Boardwalk reporting, you know, today uh, or earlier or last night with, uh, you know, very strong numbers across the board. Minto's reported, Killam's reported. So you're seeing a lot of the top line and revenue growth come through given the supply demand dynamics. It's a sector where, you know, given where we are in this stage of the cycle, uh, you are finding opportunities to, you know, buy and hold on for a different amount of period. We're also just showing to our audience here uh, Atrium Mortgage uh, as another example. Yes, that's one of our picks on the uh, mix, uh, which we do, uh, you know, they are c catering to short-term loans across uh, the, the commercial real estate business. And, uh, you know, very safe distribution, which we really like. Uh, very low or almost non-existent, uh, you know, loan loss provisions. So, you know, safe business just going through the motions of a market cycle right now.